in this video, I'll discuss the teeny tiny details I noticed in the finale along with my view on the sharks. I'll also discuss the Targaryens and some other details in the second part of this video. So stay tuned for that. Hello everyone, welcome to Ultimate Book Maniacs, your one stop for book and TV series reviews. I post episode reviews, top 10 and theory videos. So make sure to subscribe this channel and if you wanna make sure you never miss a video, click the bell icon to turn on notifications. So let's begin. As usual, I'll start with the intro first and we'll discuss John and Danny in the second part of this video because I have so many mixed feelings about that scene. In the intro, you can see the scorpions on the gates of King's Landing are gone now. You can see these scorpions in the episode 5's intro. I was going to discuss this in my episode 5 review video before this episode had aired. That video is still incomplete, but I thought I should post this episode's review first. I feel like the ship has sailed for episode 5 now, but let me know if you still want me to post that video. Anyway, as I was saying, you can see that the gates are broken and there is a horizontal crack in the floor of Cersei's map room. It starts somewhere around the twins and reaches the fingers. You can see Tyrion passing near the crack. From there, he goes into the council chamber and from the council chambers, he goes to the dungeons to find Jaime and Cersei's bodies near Balerion the Black Dread's skull. In the council chambers, you can see a book lying on the table. Is it just me or is that House Tyrell's sigil aka the flower on the book? Anyway, you can see minor changes in the before and after council chamber but some things like the council table and that huge golden candelabra are still there. Only a chair has been removed because the new king comes with his own chair. <laughs> As for the changes, the Lannister sigil and the curtains are gone and the chandelier is fixed, but you can still see the cracks on the wall. And even though the debris has been cleared, you can see the crack is still there on the map and some of the floor is still broken. Coming back to the intro, the buildings surrounding the map room are broken too. And is it just me? Or is this the same place where Danny stood when she gave her speech after Rogan dropped her off? And in the end of the intro, you can see that the Lannister sigil behind the throne is also gone. You can see this sigil from the window on the ground in the scene where Danny goes near the Iron Throne. The rest of the intro was same. By the way, do you remember my costume analysis video? I made some predictions on the fate of these characters based on the costumes they were wearing. I guess I got a few of them right. <laughs> Those who were wearing the old costumes like Sir Jorah, the Hound, the Mountain, Jamie, Theon and Euron etc. have died, while some people with the new costumes like Tyrion, Sansa etc. have survived. Sir Davos is also wearing a new dress. Do you remember how I had mentioned he had a hole in his sleeve in my episode 5 promo pictures video? <laughs> I'm glad at least Bran is paying him well. He also seems to have a new brooch. Is it just me or is it in the shape of an onion? Davos is the master of ships now. Sam is Grand Master and Bronn is the master of coins, which I think would have been a very stupid idea considering how greedy he is, except he probably would be more careful considering how Bran is the three-eyed raven and can watch his every move. And speaking of the three-eyed raven, it seems like Bran has made the three-eyed raven his new sigil, which is not a surprise considering how he claimed that he is not a Stark anymore. And Sir Brienne, who is the Lord Commander of his King's Guard, is wearing a golden armor which has a three-eyed raven sigil on it. And this is definitely not how Stark's sigil. She was also reading and then filled the Book of the White, which I'll also discuss in the second part of this video. Anyway. Tyrion is also wearing a new costume, which as I had said in my video, was inspired by Tywin's dress. I had also predicted based on his dress that he will survive 
and will probably become a king or a hand in my costume analysis videos. I'll post the link to those videos in the description below in case you wanna check them out. As for the series finale, I kind of have mixed feelings about it. As you all know, House Stark is my favorite. Probably except Sansa, I love all the Stark children. So obviously, I loved how the story ended for House Stark. That is, Bran on the Iron Throne, Arya going on her own journey, Sansa being a queen, and Jon going north with Ghost and the Wildlings. Although, I wouldn't have minded if Jon had become king. <laughs> I think Bran becoming king makes perfect sense. In my opinion, after Jon, he was the best choice to be king. He can see the past kings and watch and learn from them. He had the wisdom of thousands of kings who came before him. He could go to the past and see what they did in the certain situation and how it turned out for them. He can also see the movements of any possible enemies or even his allies in case they betrayed him. He can keep track of all of them. And he might also be able to see their moves before they make it. They would think twice before betraying him. So I think it made perfect sense that Tyrion chose Bran. Bran was also selfless enough to risk his life and offered himself as bait to save the realm. So we know he won't be like Cersei or Joffrey. What didn't make sense to me was that Bran acted like he knew he would be crowned and came prepared for it. If we choose you, will you wear the crown? Why do you think I came all this way? He had refused to be the Lord of Winterfell, yet he accepted becoming a king. Also, even though it's probably not a big deal, I noticed how they left no Stark behind. Even though they have been taught over and over again that there must always be a Stark in Winterfell. Bran choosing Tyrion didn't make much sense either. He was a terrible hand to Danny. He made a lot of stupid decisions which led to Danny losing a lot of things. But then again, maybe Bran thought that combined with his knowledge, Tyrion might turn out to be a good hand to him. What do you think? Sansa had asked Bran to let the North be an independent kingdom, which is understandable because she asked the same thing to Danny and betrayed Jon for it. Maybe she didn't like bending the knee to another queen. But Bran was her brother and a Stark. And she said that the Northerners would never kneel to anyone. And five minutes later, we see them kneeling to Sansa. <laughs> Anyways, what bothered me was the fact that there were no consequences for her betraying and lying to the Lord of Winterfell, which John was at that time. Whereas in the past, treason has always been punishable by death. And even though I can't see either John or Bran killing her, there should have been some kind of minor punishment for the betrayal. Instead, she was rewarded by becoming the queen in the north. By the way, I loved Sansa's crown, which is similar to Cersei from behind and has two direwolf heads on the front. One head is smaller than the other, but it feels like they are playing. It reminded me of Ghost and Nymeria, since they are the only two Stark direwolves who are left alive now. You can also see the direwolf fur, which looks like scales, and red weirwood leaves with white background on her sleeves. Her dress was very beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, Arya is heading west to find out what's west of Westeros. She seemed happy, so I'm happy for her. But I think she should have taken a mister with her to draw the maps of the west. If you've been with my channel long enough, you know Arya is my favorite character. I can watch a whole new spin-off on her journey alone. <laughs> but what worries me is the fact that the masters are curious people. They crave for knowledge. And if they couldn't map what was in the west, it probably meant that it was a dangerous place and no one could come back alive from there. Just like the ruins of Valyria and the Smoking Sea. But Tyrion and Jorah did survive. At least in the show. <laughs> no one who goes there is safe. I'll discuss Valyria and the Smoking Sea in the second part of this video. And why can't Bran just walk into his ravens and send them to see what's west of Westeros? <laughs> it would have saved her so much trouble. <laughs> 
As for John, I think I'm just as happy as any other fan that John finally pet Ghost when he came back, even though it only happened after Regal had died, which makes this meme about Ghost sending the letter to Cersei a whole lot funnier. <laughs> Littlefinger would be very proud. <laughs> John going north with Ghost and the Wildlings also makes sense because he was happy in the north with Ygritte. I can see him living happily there and John took Longclaw with him north of the wall. As Charmond has said, he has the north in him, the real north. What I don't understand is that why were Tormund and the other Wildlings staying in Castle Black and left immediately after John's arrival? It felt like they were just waiting for him. But John had no plan to go north. He was heading south when they had parted ways. And as you can see here, the wildlings had everything packed and they left immediately after John arrives. So John was sent to the Night's Watch, but he went north instead. So is he a deserter now? And why is the Night's Watch needed anyway? There is no need for people to send to the wall when part of the wall is broken. And they don't need to defend it from the north anyway. I get what Tyrion meant that they needed a place to send prisoners for a life sentence. But in the past, they were sent for a purpose. Their lives didn't go to a waste. They don't have that purpose now. So it seems like a waste of human resources if they are just sent to the wall to spend the rest of their lives. Why not give them a new purpose? Set them to some other task that no one else wants to do. By the way, did you notice this place? If you watched my King's Landing set photo videos, remember how we were confused why someone from the Night's Watch will be in King's Landing? And I was right about Cersei and Jon too. I said it looks like they were posing for the cameras. And they were indeed posing for them. Danny being there was a fake scene too. <laughs> did you know that Isaac, aka Bran, said in an interview that the mark on his arm is still there? And in the intro, the ice from the wall to Winterfell has not melted. It was enough to make me hopeful that the White Walkers might not be gone yet, and maybe there could be a spin-off in the future. But in the end of this episode, you can see a new plant growing just outside the wall, as John and the Wildlings are heading north. I think it shows us that the winter is really gone now, and the spring is coming. <laughs> It also symbolizes a new start for everyone. So here goes my hope for another spin-off north of the wall. By the way, if you ever end up in Westeros and want something, I have the best trick for you. Just keep saying you don't want it and you'll get it soon. <laughs> After all, it worked for Jon, Bran and Tyrion. <laughs> I know you don't want it. That was all for this part of the video. I'll post the second part of this video soon. Anyways, it's time for the comment shout out now. Today's comment shout out goes to Unique Craze, who said, It's funny, your content always rock. I hope you'll keep on uploading great content. Thank you, Unique Craze. As George R. R. Martin likes to say, Game of Thrones might have ended, but we are not done with Westeros. The filming for the Game of Thrones prequel aka Blood Moon has already started, so I'll discuss its title soon. We know Westworld will air in 2020, so my guess is the prequel will come out in 2021. I think just like with Game of Thrones last year, HBO would air these shows on alternate years. So don't worry guys, I'm not going anywhere for now. I'll also discuss some upcoming fantasy books which have been adapted by various networks like The Grisha, The Wheel of Time, and The Witcher, etc. So, what did you think of this episode? Don't forget to tell us in the comments. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, share the video, and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See you in my next video.